A very good morning to you and a very warm welcome. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup show. In today's show, we'll explore the latest updates from the equity, currency and commodity markets from across the globe. Let us first take a look at Friday's U.S. market performance. Benchmark U.S. indices slipped into the red on Friday. That was July the 30th, dragged down by losses in most sectors and closing the trading week on a subdued note. The S&P 500 fell 0.54%. The Dow Jones declined 0.42%. And the Nasdaq dropped 0.71% with the small cap Russell 2000 shedding 0.62%. Investors took cues from the risk posed by the Delta COVID mutant. Health authorities have been advising people to take additional safety measures in highly contagious areas. Also, the Commerce Department said on Friday that consumer spending increased by 1% in July from the prior month. That was fueled by demand in the service-related sectors. Personal consumption expenditure, excluding food and energy, ticked up by 3.5% from the year period ago. Overall, markets have been upbeat during the week after the big technology companies posted strong quarterly results. Despite this, investors and money managers were wary of the emerging health situation as the new COVID infections threatened with a new round of lockdowns. Of the 11 critical sectors of the S&P 500, seven remained in negative territory in Friday's session. Real estate and healthcare stocks were the top movers while energy and consumer discretionary pulled stocks back. Let us look at some other newsmakers now. According to Refinitiv data, more than 91% of the S&P 500 companies that have already reported their quarterly earnings topped the analyst estimates. Image sharing and social media service PIN interest revenue surged 125% year on year to 613 million US dollars for the quarter ending the 30th of June topping analyst forecasts. However, its stock did fall more than 18% of the market close after it said its subscriber numbers had declined during the reporting period. Australian software company Atlassian Corporation reported revenue growth of 30% year on year to 560 million US dollars in the fourth quarter and net income of 62.2 million US dollars. The shares of Atlassian Corp rose over 21% after the report. Amazon.com stock fell a big 6.9% after the European Union imposed a fine of 887 million US dollars on the company for violation of the data privacy law. Over in healthcare stocks, Thermo Fisher Scientific shares increased by 1.6%, Novo Nordisk gained 1.38%, Moderna rose 2.57%, ABV Inc. shares declined by 1.76%, and AstraZeneca shares declined by 0.57%. Over in the technology sector, Microsoft shares shed 0.85%, Salesforce.com decreased by 0.88%, and Shopify fell 2.11%. Qualcomm Incorporated ticked down 1.2%, while Advanced Micro Devices shares rose 2.6%. Let us now take a look at the energy companies. ExxonMobil Corp shares lost 2.56%. Chevron shares dropped 1.05%. And Total Energies declined 2.26%. Meanwhile, shares in BP also ticked down 2.05% and ConocoPhillips was down 2.15%. Let us now take a look at the futures and commodities market. Gold futures were down 1.01%. Silver decreased 0.93%, while copper fell 1%. Moving on to the bond market now, the 30-year Treasury bond yields was down 1.04%, while the 10-year bond yields ticked down 3.42%. U.S. dollar futures index increased by 2.1%. This is all the latest from the U.S. markets. Now it's time for a very short break, but please stay tuned. When I come back, we'll take a look at the U.K. market. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. 
If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup Show. Let us now start with the UK market. London markets traded in the red after the weak performance of mining and airline stocks. The FTSE 100 listed mining stocks like Anglo-American shares were down by around 3.11%. Rio Tinto shares were down around 2.94%. And Chile-based mining company Antofag Asta shares went down by around 2.48%. Babcock International Group's shares plunged by 16.02%. They provide engineering support and services for the defence, marine, land, aviation and nuclear sectors. The company had widened the full-year loss because of the impairment charge of £2 billion. State-owned British banking and insurance holding company, the NatWest Group, saw their shares drop by around 1.22%. That's even after the company resumed dividend payments and announced a share buyback program. The Intertech Group, a group of safety experts and testing labs, had shown a decent increase in the first half profits. However, their shares fell by around 7.29%. Anglo-Spanish multinational airline holding company International Consolidated Airlines Group, their shares plunged around 7.56%, and that's even after the company narrowed down the operating loss for the first half of the current financial year. However, the company remains cautious regarding the COVID-19 uncertainty. This is how the UK market performed on Friday. It's time now for a very short break. But after the break, we'll be back to look at the Australian stock market. So stay tuned to Kalkine TV. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Hello, welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup Show. Let us now look at the Australian share market performance. The ASX 200 is on the positive side so far today. That's despite Wall Street closing lower in the previous session. Domestic investors will no doubt be closely tracking the Reserve Bank of Australia's monetary policy meeting and company earnings scheduled for this week. Australia's central bank may withdraw its decision to taper bond buying program as if Sydney remains in a coronavirus lockdown, according to economists. The central bank had earlier said in June that it would reduce its debt purchases from September due to better than expected economic outcomes. Crude oil prices rose on the expectation of demand growing faster than supply. September's Brent crude futures, which expired on Friday, rose 0.4 percent. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 0.5 percent. Stocks of major energy companies such as Santos and Woodside Petroleum could trade higher today. Gold miners, including Newcrest Mining and Northern Star Resources, could trade lower on Monday. The output cuts by Chinese steel firms resulted in iron ore prices sinking lower. The iron ore prices fell further by 7.5%. That's all from me for now, but stay tuned with Kalkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, economy, diverse themes and sectors, and also some very interesting business interviews. I'm Rachel, signing off for now. <laughs>